Chio! What it do, St. Louis? It is time for the St. Louis Hustle Podcast, and we are talking, what the heck are you afraid of, man? Seven keys to overcoming fear. I'm your main man, H. Cortez Hustle, and this is my girl, Michelle A. Man, we got a great show in store for you. We will be breaking out a brand new segment on you guys called Don't Judge Me. Do you want to stick around for that? And of course, we got Gone Viral, some funny clips for you guys to indulge. But these seven keys to overcoming fear, I think, are fitting in this time. So let's roll that intro. Growing up in St. Louis has never been easy. And most say, if you want to succeed here, that you must leave and put down roots somewhere else because of the strong crabs in a barrel mentality here. I don't know if I'm just an optimistic person, but to see people like Chuck Berry and Nelly make it in the music industry, or the Roberts Brothers and Dave Stewart in business, or William Lacey Clay Jr. in politics, can we blame the city? Or is it that people just aren't hungry enough? We're talking to all of the movers and shakers in this town, from entertainers to politicians, social activists and organizers, and of course, entrepreneurs. Is there a curse on this city that holds people back? Is there an unseen hand that decides who makes it and who doesn't? You're about to find out. Welcome, Welcome to St. Louis Hustle. Hustle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the St. Louis Hustle Podcast. I'm your host, Cortez Hustle. She's my girl, Michelle A. And we are live and direct from the free funnelmachine.com studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. If you need a sales process for your business, you want to build sales funnels for free, you want to go to freefunnelmachine.com. Michelle, what's going on, Queen? Woo! My goodness, my goodness, man. Um. Man, I'm just chilling, just chilling, Tess, man, just chilling, just um, trying to yet survive in this here quarantine life, you know, okay. it's, a lifestyle. it's a lifestyle now. <laughs> you know, I was uh, watching the news and they're talking about uh, we may go to mid-May. I want out of jail. <laughs> I want to go home. <clears throat> I'm like... Come on, man. They keep stretching this thing out. Like in TV, you don't say when they want you to go long, but it'll be like, you know, stretch. I feel <laughs> like they do this with this quarantine thing, man. I'm like, my God, like, I didn't go lie, right? I uh planned vacation. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, because they're like, okay, they may have us go back in the office right around the end of April. So I'm like, I got y'all to plan my vacation <laughs> for the end of April, first part of May, because that's how I'm going to do. What? Extended. <laughs> Quarantine. Me and May. Damn. What? Uh, yeah. this, this bull. This is a bunch of bull. <laughs> yeah. So and as. Like, and on the news this morning, I was like. Yeah. Okay that's this. that's crazy, man. Uh, and as someone who is. Uh, extrovert, us introverts, we don't care, man. Um, you know, I sit behind this laptop. It, it baffles my wife's mind that I can sit behind this laptop for eight, 10, 12 hours a day, just working, just grinding away. And uh, I ain't got no problem, man. You extroverts, man, that's got uh, issues. You, you, you party girls and, and guys out there. Man, sit up like. Um... <laughs> Sitting in the window like Celia, the color purple. <laughs> just looking out. That's that's how I be, man. So just real quick, uh, looking at the numbers. Um, this is how quick the numbers change, right? Mm-hmm. Yesterday morning, when I was kind of gathered, I, you know, I try to wait to the last minute. Not just because I'm a last minute person. <laughs> I, I am, but that's not the reason why I wait to the last minute to get the coronavirus number. You got a legitimate but reason wait. for waiting this time. Right. My reason is because the numbers change so fast, right? That's why I wait till the last minute this time. Um, so I wait till the last minute to get the numbers, uh, so I can try to be up to date, right? So, um, and this little thing that's on my laptop popped up. My bad. Hold on. Oh, please. Um, trying to, you know what? The devil is a lie. See, that's what the devil don't want me to get the numbers all right and stuff. That's all right, because I got the numbers on my phone. There you go. Boom. Never we mind. got you. We got you. My my numbers 
um, well, last night or earlier this morning, well, last night when I got the numbers, it was like 41, like 4,100, right? Mm -hmm. Overnight this morning, we're up to over 44,000 or 4,400, 4, right? Gotcha, gotcha. It's like jumped overnight, just that much from 4,100 to 4,400. And I'm like, geez, Louise. Now, my um, question is, who yeah. was up in the middle of the night counting? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we're up. We gotta change those numbers. Um, it's it's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. Um, so I, I um, yeah, it's 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 crazy. Um, I also wanted to point out, and it's so Illinois. We know Illinois they have crazy numbers. Last yeah. night it was twenty thousand. Now they're up over twenty two thousand. Um, you know the numbers are just you know the numbers are are climbing still, but they say that we are kind of starting to kind of plateau a little bit. So there is an upside yeah, to this. Good. There's always an upside people. So we really can't get stagnated on, you know, the downside. Right. Um, but God, we always got a, we always got a God factor. Always. Yeah. I don't care how you look in the natural, there's always God factor. So that's always my solace. That's always where I'm going with this thing is, but God, so there it is. I know. And let me ask you this before you finish with the numbers. Do you, um, do you get on people's nerves with your optimism? Uh, <laughs> I, it, I know I do. <laughs> oh, we, I'm glad you said, I'm glad you said that. That's why I know, I, maybe, I mean, I hope that this ain't it. I know what it, it can't be. Because I know God ain't going to have me be single forever. But I, I know I do because I can tell, like, when I meet people, um, especially when I meet, like, when I meet guys, um, mm -hmm. when I hit with the optimism or when I hit, when I hit with the, um, my, just my positiveness or even when I get too preachy, I mm -hmm. can tell because they, they turn me off. They, 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 like, not turn me off, but they, boop, they put me on radio silence. Um, <laughs> they don't want to hear the positive side of things. You know right. what I'm saying? And here's yeah. the thing, if you preach doom and gloom, that is exactly what you're going to have. Yeah. yeah. You have whatever you say out your mouth. Man, and if you better tell them, Shell. Instruction, that's what you're gonna have. And I just, I ain't about that life. I yeah. just, I'm not about that life. Yeah. No, your perception is your reality. So if you see negative everywhere, your mind is gonna say, okay, let's validate that which He's constantly thinking. She's constantly thinking. And it just, it spirals downward. But just hold on, people. It can spiral upward, too, if you just let one positive thought lead to the next and lead to the next and lead to the next. But go ahead with your numbers, though, man. I ain't want to, I ain't mean to throw you off. No, nah, I mean, but I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that because I just had that experience, like, not just recently where I was talking to a person and I started trying to hit with a positive and, you know me, I'm going to mm -hmm. try to come from biblically with positive and the person quickly changed the subject. Huh? <laughs> I want to hear that. I want to hear that. The Bible say, out of the heart, no, out of the mouth speaks the abundance of the heart. Yep. You know what I'm saying? What's in you going to flow out. You right. know what I'm saying? So what's right. in your core going to come out your mouth. Right. And so what's in my core was coming out of my mouth, and I guess he didn't like it because he kept changing the subject. <laughs> oh, okay, boo. Okay, <laughs> Um, mm, okay. Mm, okay with you. Uh so uh so those numbers. So here's an interesting factoid. Real quick, I'ma always do this because we're gonna just always show love to our first responders because I yeah. love y'all. One day I might have to see y'all. I'm gonna love y'all anyway. But one day I might have to see y'all. And if y'all see this little face, I want y'all to be like, Oh, that's Michelle. Hey, like <laughs> hey, that's Michelle. Hey, give us a love, bump up to the front of the line, give us a special razzle dazzle treatment. Mm -hmm. Um there it is. Uh, <laughs> so shout out to all the first responders. Yeah. And, and and the people we don't even think about as a first responder. I talked to a brother uh, about our credit repair program and he's like, bro, school went up 100 points. I'm like, what do you do for a living? He said, man, I'm the guy who brings all the pharmaceuticals to the hospital. So without me, you ain't got no syringes, you ain't got no thermometers, you ain't got no diapers for the babies in the uh, nursery. You ain't. And we don't think about a delivery driver as yep. first responder, man, but there's so many people on the front lines of this thing in unusual yep. capacities that, man, we got we to gotta be thankful for a lot, a lot of people, man. So yes, definitely shout out to all of those. And if you are, if you are a 
a, a someone who's on the front line that has that odd kind of thing that we wouldn't connect the two, then shout yourself out. Let us know a little bit about what you do uh, so that we can show you guys some love too. You have to keep drive delivery drivers and like I said, just not the restaurant drivers, but delivery drivers, like you said, people who deliver the pharmaceuticals, the legal ones. Um, <laughs> but just the people who are out there making it happen, you gotta say. Uh, but the people who are out there just making it happen, you know, some people got, the reality is everything can't shut down. Right. And I'm sorry. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and God bless you guys that have to get out there and keep going. I'm telling you, we're thankful for you. You know what I'm saying? And there's going to be a special star in your crown of heaven. I'm telling you. Um, yes, indeed. We are thankful for you. And, 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 you know, everybody can't work from home. And we realize that. You know, and, and, and I'm grateful for you guys that get up and continue to go to work and you put your mask on when you go out there in these streets. I'm grateful. I say a special prayer for you guys that God keeps you guys covered. That is, mm -hmm. that's a special kind of thing. For real. Yeah. For real. Absolutely. Because there's folks out there like, hey, we, from home. we got to get out here. And you're going sitting behind the desk and you're sitting complaining. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want no shade. But there's folks that's got to get out there and get elbow deep in it and you yeah. can play the credentials on the desk that's not fair i get it i get it right. i work from home uh okay yeah but that doesn't mean that there ain't somebody else out there on the street you working for you out there behind that pray for somebody else or somebody else that's out right. there that got you yeah you know and they are literally risking their lives and they ain't oh, even get a pay increase thank you they don't <laughs> they some don't. of them this is their pay increase mandatory thank overtime you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Wait, what? Got it worse than you, boo. Oh, how about instead of complaining, pray for yourself. Pray for them. Pray. Yeah. Pray until something happens, but pray. You know? Yes, yes, yes. Let me put my soapbox away. But, 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 I saw the church lady hat coming out. The church lady hat was coming out. It was the church lady was going to make an appearance. You know what I'm saying? I'm like the probably the most. The, I am the most unorthodox church lady you're going to ever see. Um, when I walk up in the spot, they be like, I, but, um, hey, I, I thank God for grace. Yes, indeed. Hey, you got to. You got to. You got Man, to. The poster child. Look it up in the dictionary and be like, ding. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's my shout out. I, shout out to, to uh, what's the old boy's name? Charter came out and got me right. Uh, okay. I don't know, my internet was acting real janky for the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, what had happened was I didn't have to pour it all the way in the two Wait a minute, Mr. Yeah, he comes all the way out to say, listen, lady, if you push the cord all the way into its receptacle, mm -hmm. then everything going to be just fine. <laughs> Uh, I ain't, I ain't. What, what had happened? But shout out to Daryl from Charter Man, he's a real stand up dude. You know, uh, wasn't so young. I'd be like, yeah, hey, bro. <laughs> but I was a little young, but I had to phone back. I had to phone back, you know, because I will get him off the playground, but I had to get about my own way. Phone yeah. back, but uh, shout out to him though. He was like, man, we just need to. I screwed it in tight for you, but you just had to screw loose. But, hey. Watch your mouth, son. Watch your mouth. Um, out the charter for sending their people out. Charter, you know what I'm saying? Keep yeah. the people going. Thank you, charter. A another not so uh, front of mind type of person that you would think on the front lines, man. But they got to go in and out of a bunch of different houses every day, yes. and yes. they don't know what's going on in these houses. Like, and I you know what's going on with him, so I quickly gave him a glove and said, "Hey, hey, get this glove and mask put on. I don't know, bro. I don't know you. Hey, you in and out with the? Do I have anything? Do you have anything? I don't know you." There you go. There you go. And yeah. I don't know where you've been. Uh, and not just in that way, but literally, I don't know where you've been. <laughs> I don't know you, bro. Same time. Same time. I was like, you better go ahead and put this on. So uh, we go ahead and get this cracking. So this is what I wanted to point out. And I'm not sure if I pointed this out last week. If I did, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Y'all gonna get it again. Yeah. Um, so I was when I was looking up our numbers and everything, uh, I discovered that warmer climates don't really have, well, Coronavirus is everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. However, I'm discovering warmer climates, not so much. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I ain't no conspiracy theorist. <laughs> However, warmer climates, not so much. So I'm going to give you a few places we can go if this thing carry on too long. Okay. <laughs> okay. Get, Where we going? Somewhere. It's a plane that's going to take me somewhere. Okay. So, Jamaica. Okay. I'm gonna Hey, okay. Come on, come on. I can do some. Yeah, okay. Seventy-two cases, man. <laughs> They've only had four casualties. Okay. okay. On the side of the island, away from the seventy-two people. There it is. Okay. Go. Don't we had seventy? Here, they've only had seventy-two cases, and most of them have recovered. Mm. I ain't throwing shade. Okay. Uh, you can go to Africa. Go to Congo. Uh, Congo was only had sixty cases. They're going to have five casualties. Okay, mm. not so bad. Uh, Uganda. Okay. Okay. There too. Okay, but they've only had 54 cases. Ain't nobody died. Mm. Mm. What they okay. getting over there in Uganda? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, 46 cases. They have lost three people, but 46. Fiji. Okay. Fiji. He has only had 16 cases and ain't nobody died. <laughs> I'm going to Fiji. You I can do I'm Fiji. Going. I can do Fiji. Put me on the side of the island away from them 16 people and I'm cool. <laughs> going to Fiji. Uh, you can go to Belize. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, 14 people in Belize. Ain't nobody died. And lastly, Yaman. I don't really know where Yaman is. Uh, yeah, I don't know what side of the globe is on. I don't know what in what continent is in it's what country. Neither. But here's All the right. thing: only one, only one brother over in Yaman got it. Okay. 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 Um, but we did, they got him tucked away, and ain't no <laughs> And he's straight. And he's straight. All right, guys, we got to take a quick break. But before we do, man, we've got a new segment called "Don't Judge Me." I'm going to put up a picture real quick, and I'm sorry for my uh, uh, listeners who are uh, checking out the podcast uh, on iTunes, Stitcher, and make sure y'all rate the show, by the way, but we're going to do our best to describe this. And just remember, if you're on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify listening to the podcast, you can always go watch the shenanigans at stlpodcast.com. But I'll put this picture up, man, and I want you guys to guess what this guy is about to do now we're going to tell you that he's sinking right so let me pull the cue the picture up uh shell uh so if we look at this picture this guy is about to blow i mean i'm talking about he about to let us have it but can you imagine what he's singing i want you to put in the comments if you can if a song comes to your mind based on this picture what do you think this guy is going to sing? Now, we break down the uh, picture, Shell. We can see. See, where is the guy at? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's been, it's been to go down because that brown bag, it, I see a bottle sticking out the top of that brown bag, but there might be a small pint-sized something also in that bag. <laughs> You sing about the party. Well, I'll let me hit y'all with this too, and then we're gonna go to break and come back. Go ahead and drop what, what you think in the comments. He's also from Alabama. So, what do you think this guy is about to sing? And we'll reveal that in our next segment. So, keep it locked right here. St. Louis Social Podcast is brought to you by Reggie the Lion. Go to ReggieTheLion.com, grab yourself a copy of the coloring book. And keep up with all the latest developments of the dog and everything that Reggie the Lion is planning to bring to our children. Also, check out OfficeHuddlePrint.com. All of the graphic designs that you've seen for the St. Louis Hustle podcast are courtesy of Office Huddle Print Shop. Our good friends helped us with logos, flyers, thumbnails, even our merchandise, courtesy of OfficeHuddlePrint.com. St. Louis Credit Repair Institute. Get your credit in the right order. SELCreditFix.com, they average 50 to 150 point increases for over 100,000 customers so far, and you could be next. 
SELCreditPicks.com. The St. Louis Hustle Podcast is a copyrighted production of iHustle Media Group. Any unauthorized use of the content of this show is strictly prohibited. iHustle Media Group, a better way to market. Yo! Welcome back. Here we are yet again. Always catching Shelly doing something. She ain't got no business. Uh, you're back with the St. Louis Hustle Podcast. I'm your host, Cortez Hustle. That's my co-host, Michelle A. Uh, and we are live and in living color from the freefunnelmachine.com studios. Listen, if you have a business of any kind and you're not using sales funnels to grow your bottom line, then you need to check out freefunnelmachine.com. Build sales funnels, websites, complete with auto, auto responders, the whole shebang, freefunnelmachine.com. Dot com. So before we went to break, we talked about our new segment, Don't Judge Me. And all we did was judge the brother for being in the liquor store. Uh, <laughs> but he's about to sing. And we want to let y'all hear uh, from this brother. But I want to bring the picture back up one more time, man. Let us know in the comments what you think this brother is about to sing. Right. So here we go real quick. Uh you see a uh, young white guy looks like he's about five seven five eight he's standing in at the register in the liquor store i don't know is he, you think he's about to sing to try to get his uh drink for free i don't know uh but we see there's a brown paper bag with a bottle sticking out of the top i also see some sunshades to the side i know that he's from alabama he's got a tank top on so this tells me this was maybe recorded sometime in the summer, but he's about to go get it in and he's about to sing something. So let us know what it is you think Brother Man is about to sing. And we going to go ahead and cut to that clip right now, because this Michelle flat out surprised me. I, I, I ain't going to lie. I was like, wait, what? Here we go. Let me cue it up. Need thee, oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee, Amen. Wait, what? Wait, wait, you better what? Sing. You better sing. You better sing. What? Come wait, on. what? Come on. Come through. <laughs> you better sing. Come on. You see, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Listen. How many of you guys thought that's what we were going with that one, man? Let us know in the comments. Do you like Don't Judge Me? Because if you do, we'll bring it back next week. Uh, yeah, that, that surprised the heck out of me, Michelle. I ain't even going to lie. Brother, I was like, wait, wait. But then now that I know he's from Alabama, down in that Bible Belt. Okay. Yeah, he'd have been in some good Baptist services. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 he, he did see, and that's just the wonderful thing about it, right? In the liquor store, fin to get the party started. However, yeah, hmm, prove <laughs> that it doesn't matter where you at, what you're doing. When that thing sweep down on you, you know what I'm saying? It sweep down on you, that's and it. despite where he was and what he was about to do to go do mm -hmm. he still took that time that thing hit him where he <laughs> had to be clear i need this yeah. uh, oh i need this yeah uh, because i'm probably about to go do something i ain't got no business so i need this uh I, and then when that head start going sideways like that I, oh shoot. come on now <laughs> come on he got good to him what <laughs> man that yeah yeah don't judge me that's don't what's up judge me that was that was good when was i good saw that yeah yeah real good real good yeah you guys want to see more of that please yeah leave us some comments we're we'll, we gonna get find some more but don't judge me because man 
That was good stuff. And for those of you who are listening to the podcast, if you want to see the shenanigans, then you can definitely go to SELHustlePodcast.com. You can also see us on YouTube, St. Louis Hustle Podcast.com, as well as the Facebook page. So we are live in video on those platforms. And then we know you guys are listening to the audio. Don't forget to subscribe to the actual podcast and leave us a rating. Let us know what it is that you like about the show, what it is that you think we could do better. Uh, now it's time for us to jump into what we promised you, the seven keys to help you overcome fear seven keys now the way i break these keys down michelle i've got the biblical key and the secular key and we're not going to get all seven of them in this segment but we're going to drop a few of them on you now and then we'll give you a few more after break so let me read this one right here uh key number one and i think this is the key right okay number one realize that god is with you point blank and period with the d and the t right realize that god is with you especially in this present state of affairs man um god is still in control man i I don't know who who it is that you pray to and who it is that you look to but the book i read tells me from which my help comes from and uh i am excited about it that's why i can remain optimistic during this time so what say ye shell i was gonna say do you need a church lady hat i got an extra you need to a church dude hat we can get your fedora or something you need a hat. Oh, that, that, wow. that old can that old man can't go or something <laughs> <laughs> just something okay i yes um I uh, agree with that. Uh, I will amen that, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, God is in control. Drop the mic. Um, right. That's it. He. That's it. That that speaks for itself. God is in control, regardless. Um, Good. And as long as you know that, no reason to fear. All right. Well, check this one out. This is from the secular site. I got this off Medium.com. It says. Number one key to overcoming fear. This is also a good one. Number one is to define it. Define your fears instead of your goals, right? The very first step is defining your fear. Is it a fear of heights, fear of failure, fear of success? Defining it will help uh, to reveal a lot about why you have these fears in the first place. See, well, yeah, I guess. I mean, so from the standpoint of, of that, yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that definitely. You know, um, I, as, as you know, when I was a kid, I guess it depends on what stage of life you're at. You know, mm-hmm. um, when you're a kid, <clears throat> when you're a kid, you know, it's not always that easy to define the fear. All you know is that you're afraid. You know, right. when I was a kid. I was afraid. Um, I was a timid child, so I had a couple different fears. Mm-hmm. I didn't like dogs, you know. Here's the thing. When I was a kid, I was afraid of goofy things, right? So mm-hmm. it was a show that used to come on TV called Land of the Lost, right? About okay. these people that were trapped in the dinosaur age. And it was these things that lived in the caves called the Slee Stacks. The, the what? <laughs> Slee Stacks. They okay. it was, I don't know. If you're you're a tad bit younger than I am. Um, we're gonna have our producers go look that up and let us know if that's a real show. Is Michelle making stuff Land, up again? No. <laughs> the family was they were stuck in the dinosaur ages, and so they were trying to get back to the present time, but they were stuck in the dinosaur ages. And these slee stacks were these um com- They were part man and part um amphibian, kind of like a they had like a man body. And but they were um, they had like a uh, frog face almost and they lived in caves. And so they the family often would have to go in cave in these caves to pillage for food and all kind of foolishness. Mm-hmm. And these, that's where the slee stack people live. And they would go in and have to go in there and they get chased out by the slee stacks. And I was just so afraid that I would have nightmares about the slee stack. <laughs> and oh Lord. What's oh the name God. of the show again? Can somebody validate Land this? I am not making this up. It's called Land of the Lost. And Land and- of the Lost. Somebody in the comments, let me know that Michelle ain't making this up. Do you know, have you ever heard of 
land uh, of the lost. Now, uh, first of all, I'm not that old, and you come on in the thirties. And, and but it, it was when I was I was a little girl because I, I y'all those know me knew I grew up in Los Angeles, so I'm sure it was mm-hmm. on here. But I grew up in LA, so it was a show that used to come on Channel Eleven when I grew up in 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 Linwood, California, and I used to hate that show because it gave me nightmares. <laughs> Um, what else was I afraid of? Um, but in my mind, re- the reality of it was sometimes was real when I was like seven. <laughs> and I was like, but why did I keep watching the show? That real, I don't know why, <laughs> why I'm afraid of it. See, I don't understand that. But like, anyway. like Steve Harvey said in The Kings of Comedy, that lets me further know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was seven. Okay. I also didn't like birds, dogs, or clowns. There clowns, you. clowns. So did you? Did you, was it it? The movie it? Did that do it for you? Never. I never saw it. Okay. Uh, never saw the movie till I got grown. But I had a grandmother and California. California did a lot of things to me. I had a grandmother <laughs> that watch scary movies with her, and um, it was like my sister's grandmother, and um, she would make us watch like a uh, Poltergeist. Uh, she mm-hmm. would make us watch um, The Shining, um, mm-hmm. uh, all kind of horror movies at gotcha. like seven, eight years old, and and I was afraid of a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, all right, let me give you number two on the list. Let's go back to our biblical uh, keys to overcoming fear. Number two, trust in God. Every opportunity to fear is also an opportunity to trust in God. And this one is is a big one that I live by. I I everybody has those Red Sea moments, right? When you were afraid to do something, you did it anyway and you came out all right even though you were scared to death. So yeah, I think trusting in God is a a, a huge one as well. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You have a parallel for that one for uh, secular? Let's see what secular says. They go from define it as number one to number uh-huh. two, understand it, right? Nothing in life is to be feared. It is to be understood. Understanding your fear is critical to overcome. Uh, how does it come? How does it make you feel? Is it mm-hmm. an intense gut-wrenching feeling that overpowers you or is it butterflies? the level of intensity, if you understand those things about the fear, then you could overcome them. Hmm. I will, first of all, trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm. And not into your own under, hey, understand. Yes, Yes, you do. I, just to, to piggyback on what you said about trusting in the Lord and and your Red Sea moments and all of that. Mm-hmm. Totally, 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 totally. Um, <clears throat> in those moments, I mean, you, you you really do. Sometimes we get so enthralled in the thing itself mm-hmm. and we are so much more afraid of the thing. And, and when we take our focus off of the thing and put our focus on God and trusting him, the thing is not as bad or big as we thought it was. And when yeah. we trust God and rely on him and our focus is on him and and we're here, the thing, the focus is not on the thing anymore. And we're able to move through the thing because right. our focus is on God, right? And so so I get that. And, I, and, and like you, I've had many of those moments where I've been able to transcend through. Mm-hmm. Um, from the carnal side, um, understanding a fear, I think also has value in it, parallel and relating to trust in God. Because I think when you trust God, um, He will have you understand. You know what I'm saying? He'll give right. you the understanding. He'll give you the understanding of, of why you're feeling yeah. that way and some yeah. options. Good, good. Yeah. Appreciate that, Shell. So we've got five more when we come back, uh, but we're going to take a quick break. Also, when we come back, we have Gone Viral, man. Don't forget yeah. about Gone Viral. Since we're talking about overcoming fear, we've got some clips on uh, some scary pranks, man. So let us know in the comments, what is the scariest thing someone has done to prank you? Uh, and, and I mean, we've got, we've got some crazy pranks that's going to come up and then our other five keys to overcoming your fears. So we want you guys to make sure y'all keep it locked 
right here. I have done two prior Longevity Better Health Now challenges. I decided this time around I needed an extra push. A good thing to remember is 32 pounds is the weight of my three and a half year old son, and I am not carrying around a, a three and a half year old, basically. I'm a mother of four. I just want to want to see how healthy I can get so that I can be around for a while. It's pretty amazing whenever you're excited to get on the scales every morning and see what the numbers are instead of dreading it. When I went to convention last year, the day of the 5K, when this lady Merle came across the finish line, it, she was visually impaired, she was blind. From this day forth, I said, I'm, I'm changing my lifestyle, and I'm just gonna be a whole new me. I was out of control. I really let myself go. And I thought, okay, who loses 12 pounds in a week? I'm like, this is such a joke. But it happened, and it happened again, and again, and again. Anybody can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Leading up to today has been a whirlwind, but I feel amazing. Everybody makes you feel really awesome when you come here too, so it just kind of like heightens your excitement about everything. I feel so much better. If I could help just one person be able to do that for their life, then it'd be worth it all. I feel amazing. I can't believe how far I've came from last year to this year. I have kept my weight off within two to five pounds, which is a complete miracle. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs>
So sorry for our uh, podcast listeners, man. Y'all, y'all, y- you got to go over to stlhustlepodcast.com to see those shenanigans, man. Uh, why does it look like the brother had his scrubs tucked in his socks, though? Uh, did you know? <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> That, well, he, why was he the worst boy? He didn't want to fall down and drop his little food and everything. You know. Yeah, I, I hope they replaced his lunch, man. And did you see him going for the umbrella? He like 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 it was a sword or something. What's he finna do with an umbrella and a dinosaur? <laughs> he was gonna fend them off. You need something to attack a dinosaur with. I mean. It's a dinosaur. You need something to pin it off with. It's a dinosaur. I, I got it. I guess, man. All right. This next one real quick, man. And then we're going to get back to your uh, seven keys to overcoming fear. But this next one is a snake prank. I don't know. Did you have a fear of snakes when you were uh, a kid? So, um, I don't know about any other folk. Um, okay. You know what? I used to think it was just black folks, right? Mm-hmm. But um, I got a cousin that that he, I don't know if you call it raising snakes or farming snakes, but I have a mm-hmm. cousin Ian, who uh, loves snakes. He he raises them, farms them. He got like a whole bunch of uh, the um, aquariums was just, he's a snake wow. dude. Okay. So I came with the black folk thing because he got <laughs> like snakes. But um, this this black folk don't do snakes. So, uh, yeah. No, no, no. We don't do snakes. Um, snakes okay. on a plane. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't make it through the movie Snakes on a plane. Right. Because I right. Can't just, the- well, mm-hmm. let me just set this up for our listeners. Uh, it's it's funny because I think the most genius thing they did. So obviously they're using fake snakes, but they have a cord that they attach to the snake, which I think is genius in the prank because when people are start trying to run from the snake. The snake is following them, and it just, I mean, they're knocking over stuff, man. So let me roll this one. We promise we're going to get you back to your seven keys to overcoming fear. But this was too funny. And this is a segment we call Gone Viral. Run. That's a whole lot of playing right there. That's that's too much playing. Uh, young lady jumped up on the table in the restaurant. She was not playing. Like, look, uh, Mister Mrs. Snake, it ain't going down. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we just thought we'd have a little bit of fun with that. There are some things that you rightfully should be afraid of, but then there's also some things, man, that uh, some fears we we kind of have that. Uh, they don't do nothing for us or there's nothing to be afraid of, so to speak. I think um, one of the my favorite clips that I've seen as it relates to fear is, um, I don't know if you saw Will Smith's uh, little um, social media series where he would go and do different things, right? Just try different stuff. I think he called it his bucket list. In fact, that's the name of the show, I think, Bucket List. And one of mm-hmm. his things on his bucket list was skydiving. Uh, so, and he had a great point because he was like, I'm going to skydive in a few days. Why the day before, I'm nowhere near a plane. I'm nowhere near the airport where the plane is. T- Why am I scared the day before? What? <laughs> I'm not even <laughs> close to jumping out of a plane, but I am scared. So sometimes, man, the, we, we fear things that we have no need to be fearing of. So let's jump through a couple more of these real quick. So number three uh-huh. thing to be or uh, to help you overcome your fear from a biblical standpoint, they say okay. number three is seek the peace of God. Fear brings yeah. turmoil in our hearts and minds when we are filled with so much fear we can't think properly. So yeah. if you're going to overcome fear, 
then seek the peace of God is number three. If we look mm -hmm. from the secular perspective, and again, on the secular perspective, this is medium.com. Uh, it says, follow your intuition. Uh, that could also be uh, on the biblical standpoint. Uh, your intuition is your absolute guide, and it is never wrong. If a little voice keeps nagging about conquering your fear, chances are you need to listen. Now, first of all, let me ask you this, Michelle. Is that little voice never wrong? I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, well, see, I that little voice um it just depends depend depend on your lifestyle <laughs> depend depend on what you feed your spirit now if you feed your spirit with the word of god and that little voice aka holy spirit then that's that you know yeah you listen to that little voice okay um, now if you don't feed your spirit with the word of god i'd be careful about <laughs> the little uh, that little voice might sound like <laughs> my sound like this. I wouldn't listen to that little voice. <laughs> that little voice might get you in trouble. I wouldn't listen to that little voice. <laughs> that little voice might be like, red wrong, red wrong. I wouldn't listen right. to that little voice. I wouldn't do that. Run, sugar, run. Don't listen to that little voice. If you ain't feeding your spirit the right thing, you might not want to listen to the voice or voices. There you That's go. Voice. Welcome. But, right. um, yeah, I, I just um, I uh, I'll say from my own point of view, um, because I do choose to feed my spirit with the word of God mm -hmm. uh, from the B.I.B.L.E. Uh, <laughs> me. Um, when when I when that that voice speaks to me, um, then yeah, it, it, it doesn't when I sit still and listen. Yeah, it doesn't leave me, it don't leave me wrong. Gotcha. Gotcha. When I All do right. it. Let's jump number four. Number four, biblically speaking, it says, be filled with love. God is love, and those who follow God must also be filled with love. If we want to get rid of fear, we must replace it with something. If we keep our minds empty, fear and uh, can easily return. Uh, so replacing that fear with love. Uh, let's talk about that one. Let me give you number four on the secular side first. Uh, if it scares you, it might be a good thing to try. How detrimental, uh, so number four is contextualize it, right? How detrimental is this fear to you achieving your goals? Is it a barrier to your future success? Honest answer to these questions will help you determine how much of a plan you need to conquer it. So, uh, biblically speaking, uh, Guy got a gun in my face, and uh, I'm just gonna be filled with love uh, through this fear. Is 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 that gonna work out? Uh, <laughs> in your face. Oh. I love you. I love. You. Put that rifle down, bro. I love you. Oh, excuse me. I love you. Um. <sighs> Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things to be fear, uh, afraid of in fearful moments that I don't think love is the thought or the thing that you want to replace it with. Sometimes you might want to replace it with speed, right, in terms of getting out of there. Uh, I got this fear in my bones. I'm going to re replace it with some speed and get on out of here. <laughs> a little Jackie Jordan cursey. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, we got to get out of here. I'm up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you later, though. Yeah, you later. absolutely. When it is all over, I'm gonna be full of love that I got out of that situation alive. <laughs> As I do this police report. Uh, yeah, he's about five ten, about hundred. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Contextualizing though, I think helps, right? Putting it in context. That's kind of what we were talking about a little earlier. Am I even right to be feeling this phrase? So for me, I'm in sales, right? I have my own business and sometimes I have to close the deal, right? Why am I scared to ask the person, do they want to buy my product? What? 
The reject- only thing he's going to do is say yes or no. But yeah. I know a lot of people in sales have an STD when it comes to sales, right? I mean, not that STD. I'm talking about they're scared to death when it comes to sales, right? But yeah. all I can get is a yes or no, or maybe yeah. come back later. But why does that scare me, right? So contextualizing, I think, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm same way when it comes to sales. I'm not a salesperson, um, you know, and I think that's that's part of it is the the rejection. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that don't like sales. They don't want the rejection, um, right. and people have that fear of rejection so much so that they pre-reject. They're gonna say no anyway, so I'm gonna just reject myself before they reject me. Boom, cut out the middleman. Yeah, and that's funny because it's it's like some of the things that we do that we probably should be afraid of, we're not, but we're afraid of something like that. And there's no physical harm that can come to me if somebody tells me no. It's 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 weird. All right, number five is a good one. It says uh, biblically speaking, it says fear God instead. So you got fear, but if you don't fear, uh, you might want to fear God instead of whatever it is that you are facing. There's a type of fear in the Bible that is completely opposite of the spirit of fear. It is the fear of the Lord. It is the type of fear that is encouraged in the Bible. So uh, don't fear uh, that sale. Don't fear that witness, right? Fear God and uh, what can come about if you don't witness after he done told you to witness, right? Uh, yeah. And then secular, it says, determine whether it's real. Your fear could be self-generated, false yeah. evidence appearing real. It appears real, even though it is a fear of the future and it has not happened yet. Therefore, yeah. it has no real substance arising when your ego is threatened. Man, oh man, both of those are really good. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, getting there on both plateaus, so yeah, it, it's it's crazy. Um, you know, determining whether that fear is real, I think is is one that I need to practice a lot more, right? It, do I even mm-hmm. have a a real it, like like it, it's kind of like don't pray and worry, right? It's like we're worrying about something that might not ever even happen, but I'm scared that it might happen. Yep, right. Exactly. It's, exactly. It's crazy. All right. Two yeah. more. Uh, let's see if we can get through these before we have to wrap up the show. Uh, right. Let's see. Number six from the biblical standpoint is mm-hmm. be strong and of good courage. Right. Yeah. Uh, when Moses yeah. died, Israel lost a great leader. Now it was time for Joshua to take the baton. However, the Israelites were afraid. They didn't know whether Joshua would have the same authority and leadership what they saw in Moses. So be strong and of good courage in the face of fear. Number seven, uh, I'm sorry, um, number six, it Mm -hmm. says uh, from the secular side, it says decide whether it's worth your time. Uh, You know, some of the things that we are fearful of it ain't even worth our time even thinking about, let alone trying to overcome it, right? Some things just ain't ain't worth it. Um, let's see, number seven. Uh, and then my source for the biblical side, I don't think I gave you this, is becoming Christian, uh, becoming Christians, plural, dot com, becoming Christians, dot com. Uh, number seven, uh, Pray to God. Uh, yeah, if you're going to overcome some fear, you might want to talk to he that controls all, sees all, and knows all. If you want to overcome some fear, I'm sure he can uh, he, he might be able to help you with that. I'm, I'm, I'm almost 100% certain. Uh, and then number seven uh, from the secular side says approach it head on. Once you've decided that it needs your time and attention, attack it head on. Devise a plan of action and stick to it. This surely, uh, this is surely part of your personal growth and will only make you stronger. Right? So we got to pray and we got to attack it head on. I think uh, that is good sound advice in that order. 
right? Yeah. Uh, pray I'm first, saying. then yeah. attack it head on. Uh, attacking it head on without the prayer, though, might cause some further complications and fears. Definitely, definitely. Um, I definitely that's my approach. I, I pray about it first, and then mm-hmm. I, I rationalize it. I break it down, and mm-hmm. you, you you just kind of count up the cost. Is it worth my time? And if it is, let me rationalize it out. Let me dissect it. Because mm-hmm. once I dissect it, nine chances out nine chances out of ten, once I um, strip it down, mm-hmm. it really ain't it. it really isn't. And then I apply all of the, the other biblical um, uh, truths and principles that you um, mentioned, all the other six biblical yeah. uh, pr- principles that you mentioned. And then when I finish applying those and then rationalizing it, it's like that deep. Yeah. That yeah. Deep? And I think you know, focusing on the end result, the other side helps to shrink that uh, problem as well. For me, oh. uh, it's, it's the Red Sea moments. It's like, man, I've been here and I've come yeah. out on the other side. Uh, yes. And then uh, I heard somebody just recently say, you can never connect the dots in the future. You can only connect the dots looking back. And mm-hmm. even some of those things that have hurt you, you will see when you look back, they actually prepared you. They actually made you strong. They actually were a good thing. I was talking to a good friend yesterday about uh, this very thing. And we use the example of uh, he had his his current wife is, uh, you know, the love of his life and, and saved his life. But she, in order for him to uh get to with her and for them to be together she actually had to go through a relationship where the previous guy caused her all sorts of depression and all of that kind of stuff and he was like man i thank god for that because if that didn't happen we might not have happened uh yeah. and and you know same as i know a lot of women go through heartbreak uh yeah. and look back five years and you be like Man, God, thank you for saving me from that one. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, that 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 is that's got a lot of truth to it. That has a a, a lot of truth to it. So, um, man, man, it, this hour went by super quick. Um, yeah. Y'all don't forget, I'm gonna do with this time that you guys don't forget <laughs> to um, if you're listening to us on podcast, don't forget to check us out on the website, which is stlhustle.com. Uh, so you can see this. Check out this faces. Check yeah. out this face. You got to see it. You make sure you want to check out the funny videos and clips that we've been showing you. You got to check us out um, live and in living color. Make sure that um, if you are not joining the podcast, hop on over to either iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify um, and join us on the podcast so that you can review us on those uh, platforms. Yes. We want to yes. know your feedback. You know, so make sure that you um, join those podcasts on those platforms so that you can review us and let us know your feedback. We want yeah. that. Yeah. Ooh. Episode number seven in the books, man. This is episode number seven. I think we are starting to get the hang of this uh, podcast thing, Michelle. We a little bit, kind of doing. Yeah, we 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 doing it. We doing it. We only getting better. That's Y'all right. gotta. Keep because my hair color will be changing again soon as we get to the summer. <laughs> so uh, I want to know uh, how in the heck is, are you getting haircuts when we're supposed to be practicing social distancing? I'm telling. I am telling. I am telling. I'm calling 45 and I'm letting them know because the, the man ain't put his clippers on the end of a six foot pole and fade you up like that. Well, no, what had happened was, <laughs> what had happened was, I, I, he had a suit. The whole helmet had <laughs> and I had the mask and glove. It was a whole ordeal. And gotcha. stay in lane, gotcha. stay in lane, bro, stay in lane. It, it just, this had to happen. Gotcha. This had to happen. Gotcha. The hostile hostage situation. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you so much for tuning in to the St. Louis Hustle podcast. Remember, today's show is brought to you by the freefunnelmachine.com. And no, we're not talking about funnel cakes. We're talking about sales funnels. If you need to add to your bottom line, you might need a good sales funnel working for you. And the cool thing is you can get access to this platform. It's 100 percent free. Go to freefunnelmachine.com. Until we talk to you all next week, man, we want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. 
But more importantly, you deserve to do it, each and every single one of you. Now hustle up. Yeah. Awesome.